there's a little piece of paper with a, with a prompt on it that we're hoping everyone will have a chance to ask one of these ladies some questions. And in order to not run until tomorrow, we'd like to kind of keep it a little quick. This is all being recorded. And we've I posted the Zoom link on our family Facebook. If you're not on the family Facebook, talk with me. This is where we keep connected. Um, we've had a good time putting this together, and I'm so grateful that you would come. I can tell there are empty seats, and they're my family. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just take them out of the wheel. Well, that's that's the, the guilt I've been raised with. Well, you're not in the will anymore. Okay, so we'd like you to put your hands together for our Tea with the Dame hosts, sisters Madeline and Clara Alder, Clara Alder Holdstock, come on in! Haley from Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm here to introduce my sister, Clara Alder. And Haley, also from Salt Lake City, Utah, United States of America. I would like to introduce you to Maddie Alder, my sister. And we'd like to introduce you to more, even more important sisters, Carolyn and Elaine uh, Riser. Is their maiden name. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get to our two very important guests today, we have a couple of questions because we want to learn about you guys. You'll be asking us a lot of questions here, but we want to start it out with a couple of questions. Clara, take us away. Well, I just have a burning question. Anyone here have zero siblings? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you have zero siblings. Yeah. Okay, what about one sibling? You have at least one sibling raise a hand. At, at least one. one. At least one. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Hands are all up. And what about at least two? Three. Four. Five. What about six siblings? Seven siblings? Wow. Whoa. They might have you guys beat. Eight siblings? Eight siblings. Oh, okay. no, we'll oh, oh, yeah. no, no, no. All right, we're at eight, nine siblings. <laughs> what? Ten siblings. Wow. Only ten might be it. We have, have, we have ten siblings, ten siblings, ten siblings. Russ, are you a winner? Nine, nine siblings. They have nine, 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 ten kids. Wow. We thought that you guys had the most at having eight total kids in your family. But we have a couple others in the crowd, I think, who can empathize with what it's like to grow up with that many siblings. And I think we'll have some questions later on about what it was like to grow up with seven different siblings. And now there's only two of their original eight left. I know. Uh, That's why we're having this party. Yes. We got two of, the, two of the best ones. We got some amazing people, which brings us to our next question. So at this point, I'm going to need you guys to get loud. I'm going to call out the name of each of the original eight riser siblings. And if you're in that family, so if this person is your mom or your grandma or your great grandma, et cetera, now I want you to just like, yeah, I'll put up your hand. Okay. So first is Betty Hunt. Who do we have? Here? Okay. I don't hear any aids go down, everyone. <laughs> I don't think we have anybody here from Haver Riser, but let's let's all cheer for Haver Riser. Um, how about David Riser? Yeah. Okay. How about Marilyn Crawford? Yay! Nice, Tom <laughs> Barbara Call. Uh, Richard Riser. Right here. Um, Elaine Alder. And Carolyn Smith. Can I apologize for the near silence of the Betty Hunt clan? Half of them already left. 
Loud and bright. Okay, and now let's cheer if you are related to Hamer or Elizabeth Riser. Woo! All right, because we're all here from an amazing, um, an amazing set of people. It, that's the start of it. Now we have this amazing family we get to spend time with. So now we'd like to jump into introducing our two amazing guests today on the grand Tea with the Grand Names um, a sh talk show. Tea with the Grand Names. So I'm going to start out with. Carolyn, I bet that you were usually the last because you were the youngest, but today we're going to put you first and I'm going to introduce you. So Carolyn was born in Salt Lake as the eighth of eight kids, which is pretty amazing. And she got to live in London when she was a teenager and got to travel around the British Isles when um, her parents were the mission presidents in um, the British Isles mission. And she went to the University of Utah. Do we have any youths in the room today? <laughs> Um, <laughs> she married Bobby Smith and um, had three kids, John, Sam, and Heather, Woo! and lived at times in California and now is here in Utah. And um, she is a grandma to 12 and even dozen. And you are also a grandma to 12. So you guys have that in common. And you're a great grandma to four. And, um, and Carolyn keeps everybody connected. Yeah. She keeps everybody connected. And she is our resident family historian. So Carolyn is amazing, but we have a lot, that only covered a teeny tiny bit of her life. We have a lot more questions today, including from everybody in the audience will, you know, have a chance to answer some questions. But before we get to questions, tell us about our next guest. Yes, I would love to introduce sweet Elaine. And Elaine is near near the the hierarchy of, of kids in that she was seven of eight. So we have the best buds right here. <laughs> Maybe the caboose. <laughs> Oh, that's just a, a name was adopted. Yes, as the seventh adopted. Didn't they say that every seventh child was adopted from? We can't start with rumors. They changed the adopted off. from China, so that's yeah, well, they, were, well, they look like sisters. So I mean, that's a Chinese. and I. No, that was Carolyn, wasn't it? it was <laughs> were you best at Chinese? Uh, I was best at Chinese, but. She was the one that was adopted from China. She had the blonde hair. Some <laughs> <laughs> burning oh, hot gossip. Yeah. 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 Let us know. So Elaine also had the experience of living in London in her teen years, and she, because living in London, she actually did not graduate high school. Which a college is dropout. dropout. Shout out to your college dropout. She's, she's from China <laughs> and she's a dropout. So. Whoa. Quite the resume, and she had a lot of cool experiences. One of them being the Relief Society president at age nineteen. And she married her sweetheart Doug Alder, and together they had four kids: Scott and Elise, who had a huge part, maybe like the giant. Shout out, Shout out, and others, as well as Nate and Lynn. She has twelve grands. It's a, it's a trend, the, the dozen, even dozen. Um, even dozen, and nine great grandchildren. Great grandchildren. Um, she's famous for being a secretary to David O. McKay, quite the flex. And she also was a journalist and editor. And you might you might want to ask her about her typewriters, her many typewriters. And she has lived in Logan and St. George, Oregon, Vienna, Austria, and now Lehigh. So let's welcome and Bloomington, Bloomington Indiana. Indiana. Shout out to you, Bloomington. Let's go to some Hoosiers. Well, let's give Elaine and Carolyn a warm welcome. All right. So now, as you can tell, Claire and I love holding a mic. We love to chat, but this is a this is a fireside chat with the whole family. So we're gonna let um we're gonna open it up for questions. We will um. You have questions on your seat, and you can use one of those questions to ask if you like that question, or if you have your own question for one of these great ladies, you can ask that. So we'll just start out, and instead of taking the mic around, we'll have you project, and then we just sit, talk as loud as you can when you ask your question, and then Clara and I will paraphrase it, and these guys will answer. So who is going to be our brave person and ask the first question? Yes. Oh, yeah. And also, one rule, say your name, and then say which of the original eight you belong to. Yes. I'm Rebecca Savage, and I belong to Betty, and I sat down and got a Betty question. Wonderful. What was Betty Lou like as a teenager, and did you call her Betty Lou? So what was Betty Lou like as a teenager? What was what was Betty Lou like as a teenager, and did you call her Betty Lou? 
Do you know what? Betty Lou was 14 when I was born. <laughs> and that means she was out of the house before I started school. And so Betty was the big sister, and she's the only one that got a bedroom just for herself. Wow. The other four girls had to sleep in the same room. We slept in two double beds. That's all that fit in the room. And Betty got that little tiny room at the back of the house. Remember, that was Grandpa's resting room. That's where Betty slept. And then she went on a mission when she was 18. So I was only four. So I didn't get to know her really well until she, she, I went to St. George. And she was there. And I am so, so, so glad that she was there. Because now I know her posterity. And I know more about Betty. I used to go, go down and watch um, TV shows with her when she was bed fast. And I used to make her liver and onions, which oh. she loved. <laughs> and anyway, my my best time with Betty was after I moved to St. George. But I loved her as a sister before that. Oh, that's special. Mm -hmm. Do you have any memories of Betty Lou? I was only a baby, so I really didn't know her till she was a teenager, or actually when she came home for her mission. And of course, she had Mitch. And we were enthralled by Mitch. Yeah, he was our <laughs> oh, he was our first brother-in-law. Yeah. So we got really, you know, we met him with her, and they were the only there what a short time before they had their wedding and were gone. And I met her or had more time with her in California after we moved to California and we went down to see them in the Bay Area. So that was I didn't have that much time with Betty or him. And I knew the chaperone. Yes, I believe it. You guys were the chaperones? You guys were the chaperones on there while they were courting. That's what they were said. our chaperones. <laughs> you guys were the Catholic chaperones. Well. Elaine and I were up in Idaho. They were our chaperones. Oh, wow. And we were so excited about Mitch. Oh, <laughs> and I'm curious so, where did she serve a mission when she was 18? She was in the Eastern States. Wow, 18 seems kind of young. In, Roche, in uh, New, New York, York City. 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 Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 18 so years old. Of course, we were 18 when we were in London. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. All right, who's our next question? Nixon? Yeah. Nixon. Okay, what hobbies did Grandpa Powell have? <laughs> and do you have a favorite article of clothing that you remember from your youth? Thanks, Nixon. <laughs> Grandpa's pals were tinkering, weren't they? What do you call tinkering? Just in his little garage? My children's memories are with him in the garage. Yes. With his tools. Yeah. Out of the garage. Um, <laughs> Sam's brought his, I mean, John brought his, what? What do we call it? John? Wood burnings. Wood yeah, wood burnings that, that he gave to John that they used to tinker with in the garage. Out on the patio. Right. And you remember his garden. He had the garden that he grew. And if you ever remember, those of you who might have come to 1020, when he was putting his vines up to the roof, I've got a picture of him pointing to his roof garden. Beans. And he always was gardening. Um, and fixing. Fixing things, yeah, he was always tinkering. He loved, well, he loved the movies that he brought home to us every Friday. Oh, that's right. That we got to watch. Are you aware of the movies that Grandpa used to show? Yeah. On, at 1020, they had a neighbor whose garage was straight out from the kitchen window. And so Grandpa put a movie, a big movie machine in the kitchen window. Is that too loud? In the kitchen window and it went out on a sheet on this big garage and so the little kids would run around and tell everybody to bring something to sit on a pillow or a chair or whatever and we would take the whole neighborhood sitting on our patio watching movies because he had to review them before the church could let them go out for family home readings and things so grandpa was so ingenious he always was able to do two or three things at once. So he got the whole neighborhood to come and help him for the church. I don't think the brother ever heard of it. 
They don't care. <laughs> but anyway, Grandpa was with the stuff. That was that. Was that. that was it. I love that. Thanks, Nixon. And I kind of want to follow up on that because we're hearing a little bit about 1020. Um, that is the address of your home, your childhood home. But if anyone can imagine the Salt Lake homes kind of in that Yellowcrest area, kind of the avenues, like think of those types of homes. They're pretty small. And with 10 people living in a home, you kind of mentioned earlier um, sharing beds. I want to, we only could take one bath a week. One oh. bath a week. So I think it'd be fun to tell the audience a little bit more about your childhood home and growing up. What what was it like with 10 people in that space? And how did you make it work? You're chilling. I remember <laughs> um, Hamer made arrangements for us to go back to 1020 after we were grown and married and had our kids. And the lady let us come in and see what, direct, what changes she'd met, done in the house. And I remember as we were walking through the house, I saw her going like this and I said, what's wrong? And she said, I can't believe that you raised 10 children in this. I mean, there were 10 children, eight children and two parents. And I looked at her and I said, we were smaller then. <laughs> you know, and it was fun to see what she had done at 1020 with the house. It still had the same vibes maybe, but um, or not maybe the same vibes. And at that particular visit, she had redone the kitchen. And so if any of you remember the kitchen had open, they were not open, the glass, glass windows in the kitchen. And so Barbara was with us and she said, what did you do with the, with the glass? Because she had put up a different, what do you call it, cupboard, 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 whatever, yeah. door. And she's, oh, they're out in the garage. Would you like them? So we all... I think we all took one. There was exactly eight glass windows. Elise came home with the idea and made hers into a, what did what do we call it? Because I did the same thing. I have a bullet that I did my house in my kitchen as a bulletin board with 10, 20 memories on it in my kitchen. And I haven't seen anybody else. Elise, I know where Elise's is. I don't know what anybody did with theirs, but she did. they did a wonderful job. We went by, Liz took Elaine and me up to the cemetery the other day on a trip, and we went by 1020. It's completely different. It's covered with trees and bushes. You can hardly see the house from the road. Um, but so the memories are still there, but the house has disappeared. No. That, well, I remember, here's here's what they did with 10 children, eight children. Um, Dad would get up in the morning and start the breakfast and also start the lunches. And so those little board things, you know, where you put the bread and toast and they would, he would start making the lunches and the kids would help with the breakfast. And then mother would start braiding our hair. I don't think it was every day, but we had long braids. And she would do our hair in the little tiny bathroom that had a tub and a toilet and a little sink. It was so hard to wash our hair because that sink was so tiny and it would always hit you. And it was but anyway, tilted down. What? It was the tilted, tilted down. down. Down here. Yeah, uh, the sink was sort of tilted down. That's right. Okay, you're right. Um, anyway, so it was a hub. And the kids at the university, I think, had to get up and go really, really early. How they went, I'm not sure, because dad was in the kitchen making lunches and mother was doing the girl's hair. And it was just the two of us. The rest of the girls knew how to braid. So we would eat our breakfast. That's where the dog came, dog house came in. We could take a dog house in our hand and eat it in the car as dad drove us to elementary school and junior high and high school and when I was there and you were there we went he drove us and dropped us off at the U we didn't take the bus to go to school when we were in London it took us four buses to get to our school in London those double decker buses but we came home for lunch so it was eight buses a day so dad was a pretty good driver <laughs> to take us to school when we were little kids and we took our lunch in a sack and 
everybody know what a doghouse is? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the doghouse is your slice of bread, a hole in it, and you put your egg in it and cook the egg so you can eat it, and you can eat it out of your hand like a taco. <laughs> and dog houses were mother's favorite, favorite breakfast because she could whip them out to eight kids and they could take them out the door. He made them. So I don't know what else we it's had. A, it's a bread with a Probably. hole in the middle that you crack a fried egg in. Yeah. Or crack an egg and fry it. You let the egg fry in it. I eat a lot of dog houses. We do too. <laughs> um, yeah. That's such an amazing memory. And I actually was a lucky grandkid who got to go to 1020. And it really is such a small house. I remember Fran, I think that might be the first time I met you is I got to join on the 1020 trip. Oh, yes, but it was really fine. small. And Betty had her own room. And then all the boys were in the basement kind of, and they stacked just as many kids and as many as they could fit kids into. Um, I have a question that I'm, if I can sneak a question in, I'm curious about Grandpa Pal. When did the name Grandpa Pal come about? And when did I'm assuming you probably called him dad, but when did people start calling him Grandpa Pal? Do you remember? Can you guys help us with that? We have tried and tried to figure out. He was Grandpa Pal for as long as I can remember. Tom, do you remember? Did that come out during your age? It was my age group. It yes. was whether it was Mitchell or David, uh, Seeley or uh, David. I don't know. I, don't I read know that my dad name. called him but Grandpa I will tell you, Pal. And I just. Okay. Mitchell, Tristan. Yeah. So I answer one thing on Grandpa Pal. He said Mitchell apparently started by calling Grandfather Pal. You know what? I think it was Mitchell. Now that now that it is. Yeah. If I can insert one thing on Grandpa Pal. Yeah. When we started having our kids started having kids and I became a grandpa, I wanted to take on the name Grandpa Pal. Yeah, I did. But. Yo. Sorry. My tear ducts are connected to my bladder. It's a terrible <laughs> thing. Anyway, so I, Caroline talked to me. I said, I want to take on the name Grandpa Pal to keep it going. But the more I thought about that, I said, I can't do it. Nobody can take on that name of Grandpa Pal. And, and, and to honor him, that's a name that there's a one-off and one only. Amen. I've got Amen. these books. Grandpa <laughs> Pal, <laughs> Papa, how about that? Like everybody yeah. else's grandkids call him Papa. That's pretty amazing. What and what an amazing person and best two amazing grandparents. All right, do we have another question? I All have, right, I got a question. Yeah. Now, and two things. One, I lived in Betty's. We lived in at ten twenty. The affectionate name forever. When they were on their second mission to England, I was in the third grade, mm -hmm. and I I had I was fortunate enough to have Betty's back bedroom mm -hmm. and that basement is one of those you go uh oh you only go down there and, you <laughs> somebody and uh, either it was haunted or all those boys down there you don't want to know but who knows what but it was, it was the open shower oh, the, yeah. the open shower you might get electrocuted yeah. if hey it was the original rain shower it was very yeah. very <laughs> you know i always remember your, your kind of dining room kitchen area that was always a tender place of gathering you know where you can look out the way you can look from the kitchen that was that and on that was not in the original house yeah the original house was just that little square it was that, and the back bedrooms were not in the original house because you the bathroom window was an outdoor window that now was an indoor window where they kind of bricked up around it yeah but it was a tender tender place now for you ants here's the question the third generation has always wanted to know as we think about that dear and heroically quirky little grandmother of mine. What was your relationship like with your mama? I said, what was your relationship with Grandma Beth? Oh gosh, now I'm gonna cry again. The tears are, this is a free tear zone. Everybody cries. <laughs> uh, she was a, a wonderful mom. She was not outstanding. She did not get her name in the paper. She did not have anything glory but she loved her kids and we knew it we knew that she was so happy and proud of us we didn't do athletics we didn't do uh, soccer like my wonderful little friend great-grandchildren but she was always home she was there when we needed her she always had a good meal we always ate well Though we didn't, I don't remember ever steaks or anything big like that, but she was a good cook. And 
um, she's just a little almost frail um, most of her life. And I was thinking the other day, I, I've outlived her by four years already. And I think, you know, my life is so different than hers. I wouldn't trade her for a mom for a million dollars. I always could expect a love and a hug. And if I was crying, she wanted to know how she could help me. She, she just wasn't, can I say she wasn't neon, but she was a wonderful mom. And I don't know how she learned it. And we just found out yesterday, we found some of her notes. For 68 years, she was taking care of my maiden aunt. You've heard of Aunt Maud, mm -hmm. who lived down on 9th East and about 4th South. My little mother would fix dinner for her family and feed us, and then she would take down a meal on the bus, walk to 9th East and 17th South, catch the bus, and go down to Maud's house down at 4 South and 9th East to take Maud a warm dinner at wow. night, yes. especially when my dad wasn't there to drive the car. So I can remember those little things and I just, I took them for granted. I don't ever remember her complaining, but this little note that we read in her handwriting said, I gave 68 years of my life to Aunt Maud. And I thought, okay, Eli, Stop the griping. <laughs> I just want to add to that thought. We, we have these big boxes of all kinds of stuff in my garage at the moment. And that's where we pulled out all these little journals for you to have. But Hamer always had nicely leather bound, nice journals, right? All kinds of beautiful. But Beth, she wrote on the back of anything. <laughs> and we found this, and it was written on the back of some mimeographed something else, three pages, and it was her handwriting. And I said, I think this is more precious than those journals, in, especially in the shorthand that I can't read. But it was very heartfelt. And she was a scrappy little lady and frugal. They never it's made funny. money, but she, yes. she could make a great life and toys out of Anything. 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 Beans and egg cartons. Yeah. 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 Beans and now you're set chance. Police yeah. Park has a cell with the Grandma Beth Beans. I still have a cell with the Grandma Beth Beans. Yeah. Grandma with a big cell with the Grandma Beth Beans. We call them bed. Grandma Beth Beans and I've done them with my grandma. Yeah. Okay, yeah. next question. She, no, never, no. she never had a driver's license for her long, correct? No. She never had to tell about she all, the, the only time I ever went with her when she was trying to drive. It was up when we were living in Buell, Idaho, and Dad let her drive home. And he told her to turn right, and she did. And she kept turning right until she went through the fence. Oh. <laughs> and then she never drove again. <laughs> so, no, she never had license when I turned 18 in while Dad and Elaine were still in England, and Mom and I had come home early. Um, and so... I wanted to get my license and she said, I don't want to sign for you to drive because I don't know how to drive. So she didn't want to take the responsibility of me being in an accident or something before. So we had, I had to wait till dad came home, which was not, just December. Just, yeah, it was in December. So I had to wait for a few months before I got my license. But just for my mom, when they were talking about living with mom, she, I didn't ever see my mom have a temper. I didn't ever see her yell, scream, or get upset with us. We were just, I think, sent to our room uh, or quietly talked to, but she never was was angry. Uh, and as a couple, I never saw my dad and mom fight or argue. I think they did it in the bedroom after dark. I mean, when they were in bed. Which was next to our bedroom. <laughs> Which was next to our bedroom. But I have to tell you a story about my sister. Which one? The little, the biggest sister. <laughs> In case any of you who don't know this story. We don't know. We didn't know until she doesn't even know now. She would cry every night to, before she went to bed. And she would go to the back room where their room was, back door, and lay on the floor and cry until she fell asleep. I have great grandkids living with me right now, and they cry. And they get on my nerves after a while when they cry. But my mom and dad let her stay and cry 
until she fell asleep. And dad would pick her up and put, take her and put her back in her bed. So years later, when she remembers this and tell us, talks about it, she finally was able to tell us why. Do you want to tell them why? So. <laughs> I might not get the story right. <laughs> she had had a friend who died in elementary school. And so there was, you know, the kids were upset about that. And so that was something that hit her as a small child. She was a, she was a child when our neighbor across the street, Grandma Wilson, passed away. And the, the mortuary came and took her on the stretcher. So she finally decided that the only reason she cried every night with mom and dad was that they would be gone in the morning. We needed Nancy a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Can I just add to that? Yeah. And to your point, and Liz has stories, but I never saw grandpa ever anything but respectful to grandma Beth, always. And he had this great statement, Liz, you heard it, and, and Becky, you were down south or somewhere. And he said, oh, you know, she'd do the quirkiest things and he kind of laughed. He goes, oh, I wouldn't change her for 320s. Remember that? <laughs> and the only time I ever saw Grandpa near lose his temper, near, was when Bob and I were building a, uh, what do I want, a greenhouse for them mm -hmm. at 1020, which Grandpa used as a storage container. <laughs> what do you think? Well, we played it. You played in it. But we're building this greenhouse, Bob and I, and uh, we're having a you know good time with him. And Grandma came out of that heroic garage where every, it was a great great place to play as a child. And she had a toilet seat around her neck, like white jewelry. And she was prancing around this toilet seat on her neck and just in her quirky way. And that's the only time I saw Grandpa just shake his head like, boom, zoom to the moon. He didn't see the moon. But uh, that's the only time I've ever seen slightly frustrated with the old woman. I think grandma's <laughs> late for frustration to the grandkids because I often remember grandma saying something. She her little, her only disgust was when she would go. Kind of growl at us like, "Don't do that." <laughs> so. Well, I tell my kids that I was never spanked. I never remember being spanked by my parents at all. We were threatened. With the second the teller. Look. Second. Yeah, they gave us the look. The look nearly killed us. Was, was Grandma Beth in a lot of pain later in her life? Yes, she yeah. had terrible arthritis. Yeah, her arthritis was what got her where she was on. My kids remember her on the chair in the front room. They don't remember her doing much with them because my kids are the youngest kids in the family. But um, I don't remember that the second teller we were threatened with. And if if you got the first warning, do I need to get the threat the, the second, second teller? Oh, yeah, we, we didn't want to get the second teller, so we behaved. The only time I should have been dis disciplined was um, when I had temper tantrums and I would would yell and scream and do things and they because they teased me. I was the baby. And I was locked in the in the bathroom one day and was called screaming and knocking on the door. And as I finally came out, and this was just when Betty was getting ready to get married, all of her wedding gifts were in the front bedroom displayed for the wedding. And I came out of the bathroom and kicked my foot shoe off into the bedroom and broke several pieces of Betty's oh. beautiful uh, uh, crystal that was on display. I should have been banged really bad, but I do not remember anybody yelling at me. I don't even remember helping them clean up. And I don't know who paid to replace all those. Up. Probably dad to replace all the things that I ruined. You but I think I lost my pardon. You probably felt bad enough. I did. And, and I might have been sent to the room, but I should have been spanked. But I remember another time when I got a, a, in a, a giggling fritz and we were at the kitchen sink, mom was washing dishes and I was sitting there and I started giggling and I couldn't stop. I stood and couldn't stop myself. And finally dad just said, Carolyn, go to your room, you're out of control. <laughs> and that hurt. Oh yeah. That really That's hurt me. And so I went to my room and I'm sure I cried. I don't cry much, but maybe it's because I cried my tears out then. <laughs> 
pulled it too throughout then. I want to double check with Elise how we're doing on time. Great. Well, I think this has been awesome so far and getting lots of collective memories. And I'm loving hearing the audience kind of get their memories too. So let's get a couple more questions. I see one from Becca and then we'll do Jessica after. I just want to know when you were courting your husband, what was your favorite date they took you on? And what were some of the dates you remember your siblings going on? Oh, great. That's a great question. So Becca just asked, what, um, what are some of your favorite memories of dates? with your husbands um, when you were courting. Or not husbands, other Or not husbands. <laughs> yeah, it could be some some of your favorite dates <laughs> and Phillips. and maybe if you have any memories from siblings dates as yeah, well. Yeah, do you remember when your siblings were asked out of these? Well since I didn't graduate from high school, Doug and I met each other. We got home from our mission in December at Christmas. And I met Doug about February at a, as on one of my first dates. And dad, he went to dad and told him about six months later that he wanted to marry me. He went to the church office building and dad said, I would appreciate it if you would let Elaine graduate from college because she hasn't been to any high school. She needs a college education. He said, do you think you can wait that long? And I was the first quarter freshman. <laughs> and Doug kindly said, well, I don't have any money yet, so maybe that's a good idea. So we got engaged and quartered for two years. Came back to my parents' home and studied together and just, I think they were so patient and we were so obnoxious. We just wanted to be <laughs> together all the time. It was very hard, but you were smooching a lot. I saw you. Did everything we could that didn't cost a lot of money. That was one thing Doug was good at. <laughs> oh, yeah, we love to smooch. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what Dad was afraid of. So after a year and a half of that, it was December, and Dad was going, well, let's see, he was going back to the dedication of the London Temple that he had purchased and got unstarted. And he said, Elaine, I'm going back to London. If I bring you some wedding dress material, would you please get married between quarters? <laughs> so we got married December 20th. <laughs> Listen, I were there. Yeah, can I just say I was a flower girl and Kathy. I was too. Carol and Andy Lane, both of your weddings. Oh yeah. And we both were. Flower girls we got the cutest pictures of you. And I remember after your wedding reception, Elaine, we were in the Relief Society room like this. The guests had mostly gone, not everybody, but you wanted to get away without being chivalry or whatever they call it. You opened the window. Just like this, the pull down window in the release is how you remember. You and dad went out the window and escaped. <laughs> and I'll never forget it. I watched like it was amazing to me. <laughs> I hope you can see the pictures. We've got darling pictures from you too. Well, anyway, so that's what happened as far as courtship goes. I had a funny thing after Doug died. We were married 65 years. Can you believe it? When he passed away. And the people where I live at the Covington in Lehigh, uh, one day somebody just said to me, what do you miss the most? And I said, snuggling in bed. And they took that seriously. Woo! And they made me a great big body-sized pillow that I have on my bed. <laughs> oh, okay. It was so sweet that the, the staff put that together for me and said they helped, but it has a big difference. <laughs> Carolyn, do you have any stories that you yeah, remember you, from courting? Yours, hers was long distance. Oh. Yes, my courting was one date. <laughs> then Bob went back to California because the draft called him. And one date was in March. The first date was in March. No more dates in between. And on October 31st, Halloween, I got a proposal of marriage. In the mail, <laughs> and that's in the mail. That's an even cheaper date. It's a cheaper <laughs> date, and a safer date. Yeah. Long distance, and um, 
I said, oh, I can't make an important decision this fast. I mean, we only had one date. We've been away from each other. And mom and dad were coming back from the second trip to England. That's when Tom was, mom, Tom and his family moved in because mom and, mom and dad didn't want to leave me in, at 1020 alone. So I was there and, and working and teaching. I had graduated by then. So I said, my mom and dad are going to be home in November. Come home, come back to Thanksgiving dinner and we'll talk it over. So he came back for Thanksgiving dinner. We went up to Idaho to meet his family, his brother that lived up there. And then he came back for Christmas with a ring. And we were married in May of the following year. So one day. Was it a pretty good first date? Nope. <laughs> Well, yes. <laughs> we went to see Ben Hur, <laughs> and I remember sitting in the theater with him. He was, I liked him. I'd been interested in him when he was dating a girlfriend of mine from Peru. And um, I remember watching Ben Hur, and at the scary, scary scene of the chariot race, I guess, I remember leaning over and grabbing his his leg. Oh, and, <laughs> and he ne weird. when he never called me back for a date before he left back to go to California, I thought, "Oh, you're fresh. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you just ruined it because you put your hand on it." <laughs> That's the only thing that that of our courtship. Oh, Ellie likes you. Don't get too many ideas. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel much better about my dating situation after hearing. <laughs> We had a question from Jessica. Oh, I want, well, there was a memory as you were talking about the <laughs> that, that came to my mind that grandma had shared with me. And I don't, you guys probably all you don't know this, but grandpa Pal would call before he would leave the office, church offices. And he would say, I'm, I'm coming, you know, but he would, sometimes he would call and say, this is President McKay calling. And she, oh, you old fool, just come home. <laughs> and one day she got a phone call and it was, this is President McKay. She, oh, you old fool, just come home. Sister Riser. <laughs> and it was actually President McKay. Wow. <laughs> and she was like, we just called the captain an old fool. That's a great story. I remember one thing she said about after I was married, she made the comment, always have the table set ready to eat dinner. Yeah. Whether your dinner's on the table or not. It, it, it gives... It gives him the idea that dinner's coming. She said, put an onion on in a pot on the stove and boil. There you go. I think something. Wait hours for dinner. That's yeah. She told me when I got married. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, didn't she say that she also suggested that we use a little napkin and get a little bit of bird's milk if we had to, <laughs> to um, before they came home from work, just so they knew that she had started dinner. <laughs> she was very conscious. I have to say, we we really did have the old fashioned dinner, and we were. I think that's what bonded us so much. Is there were ten of us sitting at a table in that little tiny dining room. Uh, There's not much room for a table. A memory from Betty that she shared about the childhood was that that Grandma Beth would give her fifteen cents and send her to the butcher. And she would go down and she would say, she said, I could barely see up the counter. And she said, 15 cents worth of brisket, please. Okay. And she would bring home that 15 cents and she would feed the entire family wow. on 15 cents of brisket. Wow. Okay, we have another question. I got one. So we'll, we'll go right here and then we'll go over there. Yeah. So Don Lynn and I went to London in 2022, and the mission home has moved down a little bit. But besides serving the missions there in London, um, did you serve any other missions? Did you serve any other missions? Bob and I went on a mission um, in 1998, was it after Caitlin was born? Was it that? Yeah, Caitlin had just been born, our, one of our grandchildren. We went to Kate, we went to New, New, Me yeah, New Mexico Albuquerque Mission. And so we went down to the mission home in Albuquerque and we got there and we we're having our meeting with our state pre I mean with our mission president. And his comment was, 
he talked to all of us and we, there was about six or eight of us that would arrive, a couple of mission, senior missionaries. So as he was talking to all of us, uh, he gave us the choices of where we could go. And all of that from New Mexico to part of Arizona and so on. So Bob said to him, President, I have no reservations about being called to the reservation. <laughs> That's where we went. <laughs> we went to the Navajo Reservation and served 11 months because we were serving supposed to serve a year, but Bob had a heart attack the month before we came home, or a month in the 11th month, yeah. Well, I yeah. when we went, got a picture from the mission office of Grandpa Bell's oh, picture oh, is that the in there, yeah. Oh, and, we also go well, down to the temple too, and they've got beautiful artichoke plants out by the lake and yeah. the little pond area. And everything. So, I think thanks for sharing that. One thing I don't think a lot of people know is that uh, Grandpa was asked to uh, find a temple spot in England, and Dana Richards, who was the president before him, had found several. And soon after we got there in July of 52, President McKay came over because he wanted to see these spots. And so Grandpa took him to all the spots they had found. And he chose the one at New Chapel. So Grandpa did all the rest of the work for tying up that property, which was right next to where Winston Churchill had his horses. And our missionaries actually got to, to meet Winston there. But uh, Dad loved that new chapel. He loved to go down to that beautiful spot, and and we some of us have been able to go through the temple. But he also bought the property at Fifty uh, Princess Gate while we were there, and they moved. They didn't move while we were there, but that's where Dad's picture is, and as it is in Brian Ward, by the way, in Salt Lake, which I think is such a compliment that he has a picture there. And then the other property he bought was, um, what was the other one? I guess it was just Princess Gate. What's that one? Nightingale Lane has turned into, um, it's not a ghetto, but it's not as good a place as it was when we lived there. And that was better. It was, you know, we were pioneers at Dixie College when it was really struggling. We were pioneers in the British mission when it was really hard and that rather, Grandpa only had 82 missionaries, but he had 80 branches. Oh that God. means that yeah. some of his branches didn't have leadership. Okay, we'll go to Tom and then Tom. Okay. Just to, you know, I served in England with David Hunt back in the day. Yeah. At the same time. And Carol and I went back to England some time ago. We were in North Wales where I served. We went to the Wrexham branch. It was a fast and testimony meeting. Well, of course, I stood up and, and expressed again my testimony and love of England and North Wales, and that A. Hamer Riser was my grandfather. At the end of that meeting, I about got tackled oh. by people who remember President and Sister Riser, and they cherished them. They were like, they were, they just cherished them. That's all I can tell you. People loved them. Their, their, their legacy lived on. They loved people and the missionaries. Did. Mother loved the missionaries. I here's, remember. Here's my, here's my, um, well, I have a question, if I, if I may. Yeah, I'm the youngest, right? And I don't remember them. I'm eight years old and they passed away. But Shan Allred in the Lehigh 12th Ward. Our current board. I share my testimony and I throw it out, throw it out there. I'm a riser. And she comes up and says, Are you related to President Riser? <laughs> how do you, you know, I'm eight years old and they passed away. I'm like, how do you know him? Oh, he was our mission president. And he talked about driving through the canyons, but we don't have canyons in England. <laughs> and so she always tells that story. And to this day, she always relates them. She comes up and she tells the same story every week. Oh, he God. talks about driving through the canyons. I'm like, oh, Shan, she just loves President Riser. So that story is true all around that the Riser, President Riser, is beloved by the people. And I'm jumping before Kathy. I was <laughs> Epiphany this week working on stuff. I am older than they were when they returned. Wow. I'm I'm 59 and he was 50 they were 57 oh, when it was going. I know. So I always thought they were so much older as mission presidents. 
And here I am over. Okay, Kathy. Okay, well, I need a mic. Or, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 I don't really, I don't really loud enough. But anyway, I was there when they left to go on their mission, and we left from this train station. Remember that? In Salt Lake City at the old train station, and it was the saddest day of my life seeing them go. Yeah, it was. And I remember their farewell when St. Gothi with you to a meet again. And Grant, my mom was hysterical. And but we made it and they were amazing. But those of you who've been to London to the Hyde Park Chapel, did you go to the Hyde Park Chapel? Yeah. Well, who's been there? It's moved down a little bit. Well, the one behind the Victoria and Albert is still there. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. When you go there next time, or if you have in there, did you see the Second pictures year. on the wall? Yeah. Yeah, There's a picture of Grandpa Pal yeah. behind David O. McKay, who, who was, you know, his, his guy. And Grandpa's taking, yeah, right there. There's Grandpa taking notes behind David O. McKay at the dedication of the Hyde Park Chapel. And I've been in the temple, too. And it, isn't it in Surrey? Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful it's temple. Really yeah, it speaks. Yeah, there's something in England about Grandpa and Grandma. Very, very strongly. Old English cheese, I think there's still two that are available. <laughs> Wait, I, oh, yeah. Well, Tom, do you have a question? Yeah, here's a, and for the younger generation, um, and again, hear all these stories about grandpa. You had so little. Grandpa and grandma had so little financial resources, but the impact of their life is heroic. And again, I know, I think I know the answer, but for the younger generation, what was Christmas like at 1020? So what was Christmas like at 1020? And uh, with the context that you guys didn't have so much money, but you still did a lot to make it fun. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to do some research with Grandpa, and I've got a lot of his things. I still, to this day, have not found anything that tells me that he made more than $10,000 a year. It just makes me want to cry. But I'll tell you what, we never felt poor. We never felt poor. And our, our Christmas was like a toy and a book. And maybe one other thing, it was 10 kids, especially when they started going on to medical school and they went on missions and I don't know how they did it. That's the one thing I'm going to ask them when I get to meet them. And that's something I'm going to ask people before they die. How did you manage when it was like that? Can I follow up on that question? I don't know that the young people know this. So tell about how grandpa's father died when he was a young man and then how he kind of made it through this high school thing that wasn't great, but then went to the U, got a law degree, which is called an LB degree, became, one of those, became a lawyer, but never practiced law, became a businessman, but never made a lot of money. Tell that story. After Cause Christmas, because he, he was Christmas. So okay. he was very successful. Yeah. And by the way, he start, He was on the very first parks commission for the state of Utah, all the state parks. Mm -hmm were under grandpa's watch and then he became the second chairman of the commission Harold Fabian was first uh, yes, I'm sir. looking looking at the news if you look at the things that we've been gathering there are a lot of newspaper clippings that show it but he did he was extremely well respected and I reread the the funeral of grandpa Pal the other day just to get the feeling and uh, Gordon B Hinckley spoke uh, as a friend, and he said he knew every janitor and every custodian and every lawn digger, lawnmower in the church and called them by name and went out of his way always to say hello to them. He, he, he knew what it was like to be at the bottom of a rug, and he knew what it was like to lift people. Mother was not nearly as outgoing as dad was, but I'll tell you, when we got to London, it was incredible what happened to her. She bloomed like a little flower and she was so quiet and so uh, tender to everybody. And what has amazed me is we bounced her notes from her talks and things, <coughs> excuse my voice, uh, that she did. <clears throat> and I looked at those and when she left, she had two days notice to get on the next ship to go to America with Carolyn. And I was left to stay with my dad as long as we had to until we had a replacement. And when she left, she had no time to get me ready for a new job, but I had her book with all the notes and everything she was gonna use the next year. 
in her mission job as Reduced Society President. Mm -hmm. All I had to do was what she had done. I cannot say enough for that little lady that was, she was just a little Mrs. Tweed, wasn't she? Okay. About the holidays, just a story that I my mom had told me that grandma was so frugal and when Halloween came, she didn't really like Halloween and she didn't want to spend money yeah. on candy, but she felt so bad because she wanted something to, to give to the kids that came to her door. And so she would take her long gray hair and, and comb it straight down, <laughs> put gloves on her hands and a scarf over her face. And she would go trick or treating in the neighborhood to get candy, bring it back home to hand out. <laughs> Boy, but nobody knew she was an old, old lady. She could not spend money on candy because she would go trick or treat and bring it back to the house. I want my kids to hear that because my kids didn't have many costumes. I made them make their own as they were growing up Halloween, right? Yeah. Anyway, can I just go back to Christmas? Um, Christmas was fun all of my life because I was a baby. They had a, they had a procedure that every Christmas morning we lined up by age, youngest first. Uh -huh. How many still do that? <laughs> yep, we've all done it in our house. We all started youngest first. And I've often remember, thought about it late now that I'm older and a grandma and anything. Poor Hamer. <laughs> Poor Hamer never had a chance. Well, he did. But he would have only had a chance for one Christmas and he would have been one. <laughs> and then Betty was. So Betty would have been the first one in the line. But Hamer had to be at the back of the line. And I was the first from, from the time that I got there. And then we would go in and I found this the other day. I'm writing my stories. My kids don't want a family history. They want my stories. So I've been writing stories. And the other day I ran across David, my dear brother David, was always the artist in the family. And um, he made um, name, name tags for each one of us to be put on our chairs. So we would, after we would go out of the door, out the door into the front room, we'd find our chair with our name on it, which also had a blanket over it. And all the gifts from Santa were underneath the blanket. And I found my name the other day in my stuff and um we would look the, the family tried with eight kids to have each one of us go one at a time to open our gifts and that lasted for a little while and then we were all you know and then dad would look at the pile of of wrapping paper on the floor and say uh oh santa's dropped his bag again here at this house um but like Elaine said, we never knew we were poor. We were never made to feel poor. But we knew that we had those three things, a book and a toy. And I thought it was a, a, a outfit or some clothes. I think there was some clothing. That she, yeah. Some clothing. The, the three things that we expected. I mean, not expected. That's what we were given. How she got to it's stories, I don't know. And, and orange. You could always get an orange. You get a Christmas and, orange. 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 Christmas orange, I think. Yeah, in our stockings. <laughs> Lisa's tossing out something fun. Can I share a, a short story about frugal Christmas that my my mom shared with me? She had a baby doll when she was little that she carried around, and I think it's genetic for my little granddaughter or whatever, but it does the same. And she had this favorite, favorite baby doll, and about three or four months before Christmas, she didn't put this together until she was late older, but about three or four months before Christmas, this baby doll disappeared. It was gone, and she cried and cried, and, and Grandma just kept saying, oh, we'll find it, we'll find it. And it was at the time when the popular thing was to have a black baby doll. And she could not find this doll, and she, but she was begging for a new doll, and she wanted a black baby doll. And on Christmas morning, when she opened up the presents, here was her baby doll, but it was black. Oh, <laughs> Grandma had cut its hair and dyed it and painted the whole doll black, and that was her her prized possession doll. How frugal that little baby doll too. Yeah, let me give a story. Okay, sorry. Um, so my mom was close in age to Uncle Dave. They were very close, 
between Dave and Barbara. And there was one Christmas that she wanted this ooh, special doll. I don't know what kind it was, Betsy Wetsy or whatever it was. Uncle Dave hid it from her. Yes, he did. It was, it, she found it at the end of the day, she was sobbing, she was hysterical and her brother had hidden her doll from her. That was the story she never got over that ever. <laughs> I heard a lot of stories about your mom. Some things can be forgiven and other things can never be forgiven. They have to prank each other. Yeah, they did. They were um, best, best, best friends. Oh, I bet David played with the doll. Probably cyclone last time. All right. This is a quick memory that goes with, with the risers that wherever you go, you're a riser, that we went to Wendy's and we heard this lady and she was speaking and she had this thick Scottish accent. And of course, mom had to go and talk to her. And so she's talking to her and we invited her to sit with us. She was all by herself. And so she came and sat with us. And in the course of the conversation, she mentioned Grandpa Powell and she said, oh, you come from good stock. Oh, like, see, here was Wendy's in Utah, and she wow. knew Grandpa Pal from joining the church in England. I think what we've learned is that you're ever at a networking event and someone's speaking in a British accent, just name drop Grandpa Pal. And yeah. it. <laughs> All right, okay, we have a question from Avery in the back. I have two questions. First of all, do you like Taylor Swift? And second of all, what is an icebox? Okay, <laughs> the first question. Is do you like Taylor Swift? And then second question is, what is an icebox? No. Do you like or know who Taylor Swift is? I know who Taylor Swift is. Are I you a know. fan? I like her. Okay. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't listen to that. But so. I don't know. I know of her. Okay, yeah, so I'm we'll. She's a singer who wears them clothes. <laughs> <laughs> See, the next question. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who were? Um. Okay, so. Answer now two questions. We have an add on. Um, who are some of the popular singers when you were young? And then also, uh, what is an icebox? Who wouldn't do that? Who's the favorite singer? The icebox? That's what the Iceman came with. Oh, go ahead. Let's start with an icebox. What's an icebox? An icebox was the first refrigerator, Avery. And it, you would. Get a, a man would come with ice in his truck, and you would buy a square of ice to fit in your ice box, and it would keep it cold, so you could keep your your food cold. Can you imagine? That's like pioneers, but we have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How big was the box? Yeah, like? <laughs> oh, yeah. How big was the box? That's right. How big was the box? The box. Oh, the it was big enough. the ice fit in. And so the ice is like this big. Yeah, it looks like a rectangle. And then did you guys have any singers that, or music that you liked growing up? Oh, we'll talk about dates. <laughs> when I got off my mission before I got engaged to Doug, I went on a couple of things down to, what was that dance hall in? The Rainbow Rendezvous. The Rainbow Rendezvous. Yeah. Rainbow Rendezvous. Yeah. Anyway, one of them was, um, I, I like the smoothie singers, you know, the... But anyway, I went and it was the, I was with David McKay, and it was President McKay's grandson, and he was going to be a dentist. And who was the one, the black fellow? Johnny Mathis, you said, oh, you Armstrong? Oh, Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong, Armstrong. yes. Armstrong. And I remember that day. <laughs> All he could do was say, Oh, I just don't like his teeth. He needs his teeth. You saw him alive? What? Never mind. I saw him alive. Yes. Wow. Oh, it's it's incredible. Incredible. Okay. <laughs> well, there's people in this group that don't know who I'm going to say, talk about. Yeah. But when we were younger, before we went on our mission to England, my dad took us on trips. To business trips for the uh, oh no, of course we didn't did store. And back in the back room, hanging up in the hallway, don't anybody touch it. <clears throat> no, is a mat menu from the Starlight Roof at the Waldorf Waldorf Astoria mm -hmm. Hotel in New York City. Elaine and I had the privilege of being taken to dinner there with Dad and Mom and this gentleman that Dad had. He had invited us to go. Chuck Piercy. Chuck Piercy, who was turned out to be Percy. senator Bell again. Bell and Hell, and then he was a senator. Wow. Was yeah. he? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> anyway, 
the menu is okay. The, the person that was playing at the Starlight that night was Eddie Duchin. Anybody ever heard that? Yes. Yeah. He's a great, he's a great musician. So we have, I have the menu that's signed by Eddie Duchin sitting out oh, out there in the hallway. And I, it's it's been not sealed, but it's in cover so that you can't get into it. But I took pictures and I was gonna bring it, but I can't find it. It's not in my scrapbook. It talks about, it gives you the menus. Lobster Thermidor was $4.25. Oh, wow. um, a, a dessert was $2. I mean, <laughs> and that's what I wanted you to see today, but I, I didn't, I can't find them. They didn't, so I didn't bring it. But that was one of the people that we heard. And, oh, wow. and I understand just that menu alone is worth big bucks. Yeah, I think you're going to. Uh, I might pay for my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine, uh, where is Elise here? Yeah. How are we doing on time? What else do we have? Um, well, we were going to kind of let the cousins do this. Rose, did you have something you would like to share that you brought? Because I want to make sure that we get that chance. I actually didn't have time to do my presentation. So okay. I will pass it. You're that. fine. Yeah. We were just going to kind of do a cousin's remembering and quite, and that's what we're doing. So Perfect. we can keep going. Um, we had wanted to do a whole group photo before people leave. And then, um, is anyone planning to go do the Ancestor Grave site tour with Liz today? Well, it's been a really long day. I will go right after if anybody wants to, or any other time. You just call me and I'll go with you. Any day, any time this afternoon, whenever you want, I'd be glad to go. And so, do we have the cemetery maps? Yeah, where are they? They're on the table. Not finished. Oh, she's okay. Uh, we got but I know where they are. I can show you. All right. We had just kind of planned to be done by three, but we want to have a picture before then. So if we want to go maybe another 25, 30 Perfect. minutes. Perfect. Do we want to? I'll let me get The cousins, the original cousins, I, I love the story when Kathy was with Grandma and Grandpa and he lost his hubcap on the Golden Gate Bridge. Mm -hmm. I don't you know that tell story. that story. Oh, we yeah. got, so who knows what Swedish tacos are? Mm -hmm. Grandma Beth's Swedish tacos. Oh. <laughs> How about Swedish tacos. I mean, just write down these <laughs> these signal words and let's share them because maybe we all got special memories. Okay. Let's write them down somewhere. So this was my other plan at 2 o'clock, and we were going to do let you come into a little room and do this. How many of you have made an audio memory on Family Tree? Need to know how. Yeah. All right. I would like you to go with John over here. Will you help her? And all these little memories, it, you can do this so easily on the Family Tree um, because there's a memory. And we were going to teach you how to do that just even a minute or three minutes. And then if Kathy does that, any one of us that gets on there, we can hear her story. It They can be long, they can be very short. So did we- Did we do the group photo before anyone leaves? Yeah. Yes, before we does all- Does anybody have a heart out in the next half hour? I, I've okay. never heard that before and that doesn't sound very proper. <laughs> that's what we say at my old job. That's, that's a corporate American term. Okay. All right. Perfect. So, yeah, and then um, here you go. <laughs> just, just one little thing that I have for you to take home, and I have one copy for each family. Uh, I not. Um, uh, and let me. Oh, Liz, that top one's mine. I think it says my copy. Is there not? Maybe oh, not. Oh, I'm not Liz. Okay, so Liz. No, it's in. Like one it's per the original oh, eight I got family. Right I got one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> oh, seven. I guess it's yes, one so per one original. Okay, here's another one. This is not, I've got one with, okay. This is in the back of your, how many of you? Okay, uh, this is going to embarrass a few of you. No, how many of you have your family history that you're a little bit of a right? Yeah. From Elise. Some of you, I get calls a lot asking about a story, and I'll say, oh, where's your family history? And they'll say, I don't know. Uh, my family history is on my front. Anyway, at the back of the book, 
after we finished it in 2007, was a descendants list of all of mom and dad's kids, which is done on family search. And I've updated it. I've been spending the last six months updating it with all the families. And it's updated now to, I don't know how many are the totals. This, this page has been updated. I want you to take it home, one of your families, for each family, and check it out and see if, if there's any corrections because I've done the best I can. And then I'll go back in and correct it so that we can get another corrected copy uh, to you. So if you need, I thought that was the one I grabbed maybe, but I can't figure out. Anyway, I have one that I have made correction. These have some scratch outs because the stupid program kills me <laughs> and I'm going crazy. Uh, my dad's oldest sister was busy and worked on family history. And I said to Liz the other day as we were trying to work on the cemetery plots, now do you know why she had a mental breakdown? Because <laughs> she was doing family history. So be careful. <laughs> anyway, this is for you to take home and correct. But now we'll go back. Thanks, Carolyn. All right, great. So I think that in the um, summary, check out this resource. We'll go on with a few more questions, maybe. 10 to 15 minutes, and um, then we will take a photo. And I have had, I've had a lot of questions come in my head. So my new prompt is I've decided to write them down. And then when I call my grandma, when I, I like to go on walks and call my grandma, now I have some questions for you because I'm realizing there's so many amazing stories in our family that I don't know about. Although I will add when I was a kid and I found out that there were other A. Hamer Riser juniors and then the third, I was really mad that nobody named me A. Hamer Riser. So I was like, <laughs> Grandpa Pile is so cool. Why didn't I get the name? Although my middle name is Elizabeth. So I get a little, a little bit of the uh, family history in my name. Okay. I'm thinking we have some really cool props over here sure. that maybe we could have um, Carolyn and Elaine explain. So I'm wondering if and before we do that, we did have one oh, question right here. Go ahead. Did you have your question? Yeah, so in on the Facebook page, there was some really cute pictures that came in from Jane Alder, and one of them was Cousin Carnival. Oh, what is Cousin Carnival? Can you, what is cousin also, Carnival? thanks for doing your research and looking at the yeah. Facebook page. Can we hear about Cousin Carnival? Kathy can oh, probably tell you about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? Maryland. Maryland. Okay, can we hear about Maryland's um, Cousin Carnival, maybe from someone from a, from a Maryland? <laughs> I just remember I always got to do the corn dogs, so that was fun. But it was a way for the family to raise money for missionary service from the grandchildren who wanted to go. And so that was the purpose behind our, you know, 10 cent corn dog um, donation and all sorts of other things. But it was so much fun. But we always had it in our backyard at um, on Ambassador Way. We may have done it sooner. Yeah, on 22nd. 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 So um, I think one of my favorite memories is a picture, and it was at the Ambassador Way House, but of Grandpa in a chair, uh, just with grandkids all around. I think Hamer 4 was just a wee lad and was just right by his knee. And so it was just loads of fun. And I know my mom's love language was to entertain and have good food and just be together. So Christmas Cousins parties. Carnival was so Christmas fun. Parties. Santa. Christmas parties and the real Santa who smelled a little like rum. <laughs> so we knew he was the right one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just loads of fun. So. How did I miss the corn dogs? Right, no kidding. Frosty month. When did those here? I think Bob Bob sold <laughs> right here, here and I did corn dogs and yeah. And the fishing, the fishing, the fishing. Oh my gosh! Yeah. 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 How many know where the term elk comes from? Oh, little, yeah. Yeah. Oh, little yeah. There are We're multiple the versions out. about that. Back out. Out. Tell us what your version is. Well, my my version, Alex stands for all little kids. A L K is all little kids, but the Rochi Toe. Does anybody know the Rochi Toe mm -hmm. story? I the, this is what I heard the Rochi Toe story being. They were all out at Bear Lake, and they were out in a rowboat, and the wind came up as it does at Bear Lake, and they were all out there, and a storm kind of came, and the rain and rain was coming down, 
and they couldn't see which direction to come. And so somebody, I don't know if it was my mom or who, started hollering from the shore and they started hollering row to shore, row to shore. And so when they got in, they they kept saying, what, what, what is Roti Toe me? <laughs> and they thought in the boat that they were saying Roti Toe, when in fact on the shore, they were saying row to shore, row to shore, so they could hear them to get into shore. And is that the story that you all remember? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you, you know, we want to know your story. Uh, now we want to know your story. Here's what these cats do. Oh, they're supposed oh, to fly uh, open. You, you yeah, twist them close and they fly open. I the original Alex. Okay. So the original I'll Rosie Toe. So. We want to hear the original Rosie Toe. Well, I don't know about that. I think that's cool. But I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not my mom's version. But oh, whatever. Oh, they're both gone, so we can't check. Oh, your um, the original Alex was, and this is true to life. I believe it. I'm the oldest one here. Don't scratch on left. Next one to go. I'm on my way. I'll be gone in three. Um, but anyway, the original elk was in British Columbia or Canada. I don't know that, but it's not true. <laughs> the original elk was in British Columbia and Grandpa took all the kids in the Ford to British Columbia. Grandma stayed home with the baby, who I think was Dick, right? Have you heard this? Yeah. This was just a, just the original. Baby. Well, yeah, they didn't have the two babies right there. They weren't around. But I think Dick was the baby. The Grandma got sick. left home on purpose because she wanted to break. <laughs> and um, she did a lot. We remember Grandma a lot on the couch. Let's just be honest, right? <laughs> That's a lot on the couch. You, know, you little guys don't even know who she was. She was a blast back in the old days. But then she used to ride a bike. She used to play hopscotch. She was the cutest lady in the world. And then she got really old. Probably oh, she was wow. my age. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, they went to Canada to have this number of vacation. And your mother, Betty Lou, made Grandpa take Isla Coon with them on the trip because Isla Coon was your mom's best friend and she was trying to date your mom's boyfriend. And so Betty Lou, in true form, said, you've got to take my best friend. So she wants Schnook, my boyfriend, while I'm gone. So they took, this is true, Isla Coon, they took her to... On the trip, she was with the original A. You've heard the story. I don't know. Probably somebody on the roof. I don't know. But that was the original out. All little kids. And it may have been Dave that said it, whatever. I don't know, because he, he was the clever one. But the original one, my mom always told me this, and I believe it, that they had to take Isla King so that she would date your mom's boyfriend. <laughs> she was gone, which is typical Betty Lou. I totally believe that. Yeah, that's true. The same where Rosie told me. I still don't know, but that's not it. Let's be open on us. That's, that's really close to mine, but I didn't know that either. The version that my mom, that I remember my mom telling me, you know, Grandpa right, went this. to the same, to the, what Kathy said, to the conference, but I thought it was Chicago. You're saying it was British Columbia. Okay. Somewhere in Canada. Somewhere. Like Alberta. And, and Grandpa was off to, on his, his meetings. Break. He was off on the meetings, and the kids got left behind for a few hours while he was at his meetings, and they were in the hotel room trying to come up with something fun to do. So they created kind of like a little club and they named the club All Little Kids, All little kids and this was their call sign, Rao Chito. Yeah, that's yeah. what I heard. It was Rao Chito, Rao Chito. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, any fun. other, I any other that. takers? Oh, any other version? Version? Oh, I, I don't have a version. This reminds me of Monty Python and certain <laughs> things. <laughs> what they say, let's not worry about who killed who. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, it's a nice safari. There's a sentence in this journal entry here that says, but you'll have to clarify. It says, it says that I also wrote a note to Bob and Bertie uh, Hill in Twin Butte or something, told them how our ALK originated on return from summer sojourning. Yeah. Okay, that's all, and it ends. So oh. if that's <laughs> this page, this page this is why the millennium's gonna take it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, do we have more questions? More yeah. Oh, and I also think we get to. I'm coming up with some. Uh, awards on the spot, but I think we have the award for travel furthest to be here. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. And you, you guys, Jacob came pretty far. You guys are going to have to find it out for the award, and I'll think of the award really quick. But um, I guess we don't have to. It's okay. I'll just. Oh, you got a, she has a comment. Okay, yes. Yeah, so, and you are um, 
traveling far to represent the David Riser family. So yes. that's wonderful. And I think my brother and his wife might be watching this live stream. Yes. So I, I just have a question about the beautiful lace tablecloth. Is that a family heirloom that fills their That story? was on their table all the time. Yeah. What's the story behind this um, wonderful lace tablecloth behind us? On that little table, on that little table in your dining room. So we think that this was the tablecloth and the little table in the dining room. So imagine fitting ten people around there. I'm guessing. Right. Anything to add? No. No. Okay. So yeah. But it was it. It just. No, it just yeah. barely enough for the chairs to look right. right to get that yeah. thing. I, I really don't know. I got a lot of my other grandmother. Well, I have grandma shawl, just so you don't know. Uh -huh. So this it's just barely fit part. the room, and they just had enough room for the chairs to fit in. It sounds like they were uh, very creative people. Okay, I have a question. I, have, I used to ask on this. Is this the one that she would stretch on the stretcher, yeah. wash and stretch? <laughs> we used to have to stretch these kind of things. Instead of ironing them, you put them on a stretcher to keep them to dry straight. Yeah. Okay, so um, this is a question for me. I know Elaine best, obviously, because she's my grandma, and I've heard little stories about the others. But we heard earlier that David was sort of the artistic, the creative one. And I'm wondering, for sake of brevity, just like one little thing, could you say what your favorite thing about each of the seven siblings, maybe oh, even yeah. just a word like, we love that David was creative. Maybe Betty was spunky or That's something like that. If, and this is a lightning round question. I'm making you think. Um, okay. Well, let me start with Hamer. And I mentioned he was 16 when I was born. Are are you any any of you separated by 16 years from a sibling? Was it different? It, it, your relationship is different, isn't it? Well, I have to tell you, I, I kind of idolized Hamer like I did Mitchell. Mitch was so dang handsome. <laughs> and we thought him in his sailor uniform was just heaven to, I don't know. <laughs> but Hamer, Hamer was the same way in a doctor outfit. When he got his flights, uh, I, I just was so proud to be his little sister. And I didn't mind at all. Uh, that we had a big separation, but um, Hamer was very, very smart. For one thing, he was extremely smart, and he was a good doctor. He was a really good uh, diagnostician. He served several of the brethren in Salt Lake, um, and had a very good relationship with them. Um, he always said to Betty Joe, "Let's go, Betty Joe," and that used to annoy me. And I used to. Get upset when he would treat Betty Joe like she was a, a little handmaiden, but what I loved him anyway. Betty? Listen, now, Betty. Betty. What's one, one thing you like about Betty? Mitch. Okay, do you want to say that? Betty was very pretty and she always looked nice and she always dressed. I, I don't know why she got her clothes. She it wasn't it, JC wow, Kennedy. She made them all. She made them. She made them. Okay, that could be. Okay, how about Marilyn? And then Marilyn. Hammer Dave. David. Oh, oh Dave. Sorry, I David thought that it was and He was always ready with his pencil to do a drawing, or we even sent Christmas cards out as eight by ten huh. uh, papers, and some of them are awfully cute. We have a couple yeah. of he, artwork in yeah. behind you on the table. Uh, anyway, David, you could just he could do anything that was. And playing the piano playing just playing it for you. And then Marilyn, Marilyn kind of, I think, kept was the glue that kept us together. Marilyn and Barbara were the two that that kept the glue on the family until they. I miss them. I got to tell you, I miss them. Marilyn's the one that told mom me. when she got pregnant with Who? Barbara. Yeah, when Marilyn, yeah. when mom got pregnant yeah. with Barbara, yeah. she said. Yeah. Isn't five a many? <laughs> oh yeah, she feels so bad about making that statement to her. She's having a rotten little kid. I don't think that I could tell my mom that five was too many. But but Marilyn was really honest too. She lets no. She let it go. She, she yeah. <laughs> and Betty or uh, Marilyn? Marilyn always paid attention to my children, which I appreciate. So did Barbara. And 
and Barbara was just the Andy main. I don't know. <laughs> I miss her a lot. Um, but Barbara was a school teacher and she helped me a lot with my kids. I think Nate lived with her at one time briefly. Well, let's see. I don't know what you were doing here in high school. And Elise did her student teaching in Salt Lake and Barbara took her in. I paid her rent and she um, had a good experience living with Barbara. Everything was positive with Barbara. And Richard and I were the closest. We were four years apart. Everybody else was two, but Rich mother had her appendix out in between us and didn't have a baby. Um, but Richard was just my best friend as I got older. And Fran knows I could always call Richard when the others were gone. And he was so, so dear. And Kathy, I love because she was so good to my brother and Fran. And then, okay, me, what do you remember? <laughs> we, we have always been the best of friends. She says we used to fuss together and disagree, but I can't remember us having fussy times. We were, we've been so close for so long. Best friends. Yeah. And well, I told you about her crying. <laughs> yeah, I was the one that cried before. I went, mean, why didn't you just tell me to come to bed? <laughs> <laughs> that was their way of doing it. And this little girl has always been cuter than I've been, so I'm just jealous. <laughs> she was cute with with general authorities and people who were important. We had a lot of them come to our house. And she would always show off for them. She was just so dang cute. Yeah. She looked like a little Chinese baby. I was a spoiled <laughs> rotten with a crane of hand if you have mine with the burger. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we're going to miss each other, and we don't know which one's going first, but it better not be too long between. <laughs> um, you want to do the same question, or you already... You want to I think everybody? she covered it. Yeah. All right, well, I think we can wrap it up now so we can make sure we get our photos. Yes, so we will head to... Elisa, are we going to take the picture in the gym? Or should we do it in here? Right here. Yeah, we'll do it in here. Right. Lynn's going to give us some instructions on the photo, but I just want to say thank you so much to our two gorgeous and amazing and sweet and lovely. Oh, we will miss you. We'll you see you after today. Um, but we just want to say thank you so much for sharing your stories and your memories. I mean, I just think we can all agree that this is a very like palpable and sweet I just have one more statement that was made by President Hinckley at Dad's funeral. Oh. And his comment was, in the, was, he doesn't know how our father raised eight children on a church salary. And he said, and I know a little bit about that because he was in the financial department at that time. Wow. Yeah. He really, I mean, I was taking a couple notes and I was thinking about how patient and how kind, how they did a lot with not very much. And I think it's inspired me to come out and try to be a little bit better myself. We're all a bit of all right and can keep trying to be that. So also this is a great a great reminder for us to take take call our people who have and listen to your stories because I love to hear these stories. Yes, and most of you had questions, but if you have more questions for Elaine or Carolyn or um Yeah, you can you can yeah. find them after this or call them and it's great to ask questions and ask your family questions, but also um, I love Elise's idea of getting some of these memories audio recorded because think about how special that is, how your grandkids, your family members, your ne your neighbors, anyone can hear these special stories like we got to hear today. So with that, everyone is a bit of all right. And let's take this group photo and then we can disperse.